Hi, my name is Amber. Welcome back to my channel, Books and Beaches. So today I want to talk about all of the goals that I have that are bookish related for 2024. Now, I don't set a ton of bookish related goals, but this year I have decided to set a few. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to talk about them. Now, I always set a Goodreads goal and I keep it fairly simple. I typically know I'm always going to go over this book goal, but I don't know. I like to beat it. So <laughs> there's that, but I will set my Goodreads goal. I believe I set it at 60 this year. I used to set it at 52 and just keep it like a book a week. Um, and then I decided to bump it up to 60 just to keep it at a slightly even number. <laughs> and so my Goodreads goal is 60. Um, like I said, more than likely I will meet that goal and far surpass it, but it is my goal that I just kind of always set every year. And then this year I decided to do a couple different things than I've done in years past. So last year I did the whole 23 books in 2023 trend and it was my first full year on YouTube and I thought it was a great idea and it would have been something super easy for me to accomplish and I just ignored the list. It's all on me. I will completely admit it. In the beginning of the year, I did so, so well with it. And as the year went on, it just didn't. So this year I've decided to do a little bit more manageable um, lists with also some tweaks to it so that I know I'm keeping tabs on that list with also adding some other challenges to still probably keep it the same amount of books, but just different. <laughs> so let me tell you about what my plans are. So one thing I did was I put out on my Facebook to any of my Facebook friends, um, kind of a call, a call to order, so to say, I wanted 12 friends to recommend me 12 books, basically out of my comfort zone. As we all know, I love a good thriller. It's no surprise. And I said, give me a book that'll kind of, that'll push me out of that comfort zone. And so I received 12 recommendations that I don't think any of these, maybe one might be a thriller, maybe. Um, and some of them are books that I had never even heard of, which is really exciting. So I've got those 12 recommendations. Now I am not going to list all of them here. Um, I maybe will pop up the graphic that I've got, but what I'm going to be doing with those 12 recommendations is I am basically going to be creating like a spinner, um, that each month, even though I, I am not a TBR person, like I, I I'm never going to make like a TBR video, but each month I will spin to decide what book off of that list I will read that month. So every month of the year, I will be reading one of the books off of this list. And I guess if I'm feeling, you know, like wanting to do more in a particular month, I can always decide if I wanted to do an additional one in that month or something um, and finish earlier in the year uh, so that I'm not waiting until December. But for sure, I will at least be doing one book off of that list per month. So I thought that was pretty exciting. And there are several books on here that I'm super excited to get to. So like I said, I will, I'll be sharing that graphic. Then another project that I really want to start this year, and I can kind of give credit to Krista at Books and Jams for this, because she did this project last year. And I'm tweaking it a little bit to make it my own, not to say that I came up with this idea, because um, I am sure other people have done this, but I want to pick a booktuber every month to pick a book that they recommend to me and read it. So each month I will have a featured booktuber, um, whether they're friends of mine or just people I enjoy watching, and I will reach out to them and have them recommend a book to me. And then more than likely I'll do some sort of like reading vlog video talking about reading that book 
that that particular booktuber recommended to me. So uh, little does Audrey from Chapter and Converse know that she is actually my January pick. Uh, <laughs> she has a Marco Polo waiting for her right now uh, that tells her she is my January pick, uh, mostly because she gave me so much grief about all of the books I didn't read off of my 23 books and 23 list. So uh, Audrey will be my pick for January, but I have not decided who the rest of my booktubers will be for the rest of the year. So if you have some suggestions on booktubers that I should read like and, and ask for recommendations from, please tag them in the comments below. Obviously, I have people that I love to follow, but in 2024, I'm all about finding new people to follow as well. Not that I don't love my normal people. Lindsay, you know I'm coming for you too. But um, I, I'm looking for, you know, for I'm always looking for new content. And so if you have a suggested YouTuber that you want me to reach out to and get a recommendation from them, like I said, put them in the comments below. Um, I also put um, a post out on my community tab. So feel free to tag them there as well, because I want to fill up the rest of the months this year as well. So I'm always looking for new people. So that is another goal of mine that I have. So at least one two YouTuber a month to do that. And then the final little goal that I have for this year, like I said, I don't have very many goals that I set for myself because I am such a mood reader. Um, so I don't want to confine myself down to too much. And, and that's not to say that I won't come up with other things that I decide to do this year. Like there are other um, book clubs that I want to be a part of or my own book club, in-person book club that I'm a part of so, and things that I want to accomplish within those things. But I don't necessarily set those as specific goals. Um, and I think I even made a video last year of like authors I want to read to zero, but I don't have specific deadlines for those. But this next goal, these will be deadlines that I'm hoping to meet by the end of 2024. So as I did last year, I had my 23 books I wanted to read in 2023. This year I've narrowed it down. And once again, I took this idea from Krista at Books and Jams. So thank you, Krista. And I scaled it back and decided to do 12 books in 2024. Now I pulled all of these books off of my shelves back here. I thought it would be a great idea to make sure I had a physical copy of them. These are books that I should be reading off my shelves. And Yes, I have books off of Neck Alley I should read, but I, I, you know, I can focus on those in November or, you know, all the different months that people have things like that going on. And so I wanted books that I have purchased, whether it be last year or previous years or however many years that I have had these books, I want to focus on reading them. So I felt like 12 was a very manageable number, just like the books from my friends and the books that'll be suggested by YouTubers. I will spin and pick at least one a month. And if I'm feeling even more, I will be able to pick more, but I know I will guarantee myself to pick at least one a month and pick these to get through them. So these books, I am going to share these with you. So I have them all stacked over here. These are kind of just in super random order. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and go through them. I try to pick a variety of books. Now, obviously, I have a ton of thrillers, but I tried to give myself a variety so that I wasn't stuck just in one genre. Um, so yeah, we're going to be kind of all over the board. So let's take a look. All right, to start us off, one of my very favorite um, historical fiction writers is Chanel Clayton, and my light is probably going to watch this out a little bit, but this is The Cuban Heiress. This is her most recent book in the... Um, next year in Havana, like family series. And I think, I think this one is based on a cruise ship, if I remember correctly. Um, but I'm almost positive this still involves their family. So, and you know, of course it's not going to tell me, but, um, it came out last year. I never picked it up, but I really do enjoy her writing and I know I would fly through this. So first one on the list. 
Another one that I recently picked up, and I know a lot of people had commented on this when I picked it up from Half Price Books, and that was Room by Emma Donoghue. This one really just intrigues me, and I thought, why not throw it on my list? I know that I will pick it up rather than just have it sit on my shelves and yeah, just have it on there. So there's that one. One that I have seen really kind of making its way onto a lot of people's best thriller that they've read recently lists um, is The Drowning Woman by uh, Robin Harding. And so I put this as one of my top thriller picks off of my shelves currently. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to this because this has been getting some very, very high ratings. So put that one on the list. I, this one has been staring at me from my shelves for quite a while. And I think I even pre-ordered it and then just let it sit there. And that is Too Late by Colleen Hoover. I'm assuming this is gonna be more along the lines of Verity. Uh, versus some of her more like romancy books. So had to throw this one on the pile too. Let's see. One that I am thinking this is more nonfiction. Um, oh, it, was, it still says it's going to be a novel um, as a tribute to their mothers. But this is Things I Wish I Told My Mother um, by Susan Patterson and Susan uh, D. Lalo. D. Lalo. Yeah, D. Lalo, I think, I think. And it says, you know, also James Patterson. So I'm not sure what connection he has in here. Um, but and it says a mother and a daughter on vacation in Paris unpack a lifetime of secrets. So I thought that would be kind of a good way to break up, you know, some of the thrillerness of it all. One I've heard a lot of people talk about, and I know this author's like second book in this series is coming out this year, and that is Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone by Benjamin Stevenson. Heard great things. So figured this would be a great book to add to that list. Let's see. I think my friend Nicole is going to be very happy that I added this one um, because I want to say this might be one of her favorite historical fictions, if not her favorite Jodi Picoult book, Vigo book, I don't know. But that is, my lights are just washing everything out today. Uh, the Story Kept Storyteller by Jodi Pico. This is going to be historical fiction, I believe World War II, if I'm not mistaken. So, but I have heard this is super powerful. So a great book to put on, you know, hopefully what would be my best books of the year. One I picked solely, and not solely, I shouldn't say solely, but because I know that Julia Whalen reads the audiobook, uh, and this is, it is, it's one of us, and this is by JT Ellison. Now I said, <sighs> towards the middle of last year, I read a short story by JT Ellison, and I was like, I can't wait to pick up more by this author. And did I pick up more by that author? No, I did not. So it is about time that I pick up more of her writing and this will be my chance. So there's that. Another one that I've had on my shelves for quite a while, and I can't even remember where I heard about it. it I think it was a YouTuber somewhere, um, but said this was a very powerful book. And I, I do, f I am very interested about books that are, are written around a school shooting. And this one is Three Hours by uh, Rosamund Lupton. And I just, I've heard this is a very powerful book. So I wanted to add that one to my list. Three more here. Yep. Uh, I believe Audrey, a chapter in her verse, said this one was a great book. And this is I Am Not Done With You Yet. This is by Jessie Q. Santanto. Now, I have not read a thriller by her. I have read her Dial A for Auntie series, as well as one of her YA books. So this is going to be kind of, you know, something different from this author for me, but I'm super intrigued. So added that one. This next book, I started on audio and I wasn't a fan of the narrator, but I have heard such great things. So it's the reason why I chose to put it on this list. And so I wanna give it a chance reading it physically. And that is 100 Years of Lenny and Margot. And this is by Marianne Cronin. 
So I'm pretty sure this was another uh, Lindsay at Lindsay's Little Library recommendation. So went on the list. And then last but certainly not least, this might come as a surprise because this is going to be probably more of like a chick lit romance book, but I wanted to throw something just super different in the mix. As I was pulling these books off my shelf, I was just, I was looking for something that just really didn't fit anything else that was in this pile. And I have had this book, so I said, why not? And that is Set on You, and this is by Amy Lee. And I picked this up because this was, I believe the main character in here. Yeah, she is a curvy fitness influencer. And I am curvy. I am super into fitness. I love the gym. I used to love the hit class that I went to and I love lifting weights. So when I heard about this, it sounded right at my alley and I picked it up and it's sat on my shelf ever since. So probably a little bit of a surprise, but I added it to the list. So those are the 12 books that I have on a list that I want to read in 2024. And that will kind of round out the simple goals that I have set for myself in the year 2024. Like I said, not too many, but since I am such a mood reader, I don't want to make anything too crazy that I can't stick to. Because even last year, I couldn't stick, obviously, to the 23 and 23. So, like I said, I am looking for recommendations on booktubers that you think I should get recommendations from. So tag them in the comments below. I would really, really appreciate it. But as always, I want to hear what your plans for reading are in 2024. And as always, if you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe and I will see you next time.